anyway, I was just thinking of something. And one of the ways that we've been able to really grow our portfolio is because we've been able to really be scrappy and bootstrap and leverage the capital that we did have and, and to just, just leverage it to something much, much greater. But so uh, basically what I get asked about is a lot is negotiation tactics. How do you negotiate a deal? And what are some, what are some of the ways do you take into a negotiation? It's a lot more... Is a lot more complex. It's a lot more sophisticated than just going, oh, this guy wants $10, you want to pay 5 and you meet in the middle. Now, uh, sure, people, there's always a give and take. But what I found in my personal experience is one of the greatest tools you can use in when you're negotiating anything, really, is understanding, basically putting yourself last and understanding the motivation of the other party. Now, nine out of 10 people you meet will come to you, and you I'm sure you felt it before, you feel it all the time, you can tell what somebody is really just talking to you for, for reasons that benefit themselves, and you don't really feel right about it, there's no connection, there's no rapport being built. So one thing that I do is, and which is why, if I get told no with anything in life, I don't take it as a no, I take it as, okay, I probably didn't explain this correctly. And here's why I have that attitude. The number one thing that I do in any negotiation and what I can share as a, as a tip is to always, number one, identify the other party's motivation for doing what they're doing. Number two, tailor your proposition around their motivation satisfy their motivation first and then tailor their motivation and satisfying their motivation around what it is that you want to do. For instance, let's say that somebody wants to move home to their country and want to they want to sell this property, but they have an emotional attachment to it. So they're asking $500,000 and you come in with a let's say with a uh, offer of 490, right? And somebody else Somebody else has uh, I'm freaked out here an offer of 495, but the person meets you and their motivation for selling isn't just the money; it's knowing that somebody will what they will do with the property, for instance. So if somebody meets you, this is actually a real situation. This has happened to me. Somebody meets you, and let's say the one that offers 495 just wants to take it, tear it down, and build something else. And that person has, hasn't factored that in and just goes, I'm offering it more money and I want to get this because I'm offering the money. But the person say, may, may go, you know what? I want this to be a home for somebody else. This is a crude example. But because you say, say you found out in your conversation, you listened, listen, that's the number one. Actually, we'll talk about some other video. You listened and paid attention to what the seller's real motivation was. And from there, you were able to tailor your whatever you wanted to get out of the situation around that. So let's say I come here with an offer of 490 and I'm telling him I'm moving here with my children and we're going to stay here and we're going to keep it the way it is. And oh, this is a bad example. But I hope you get what I mean. Now he goes, you know what? This is something that works for me. And boom, you got a deal. Another situation, this, this can work in a multitude of ways, just basically understanding the motivation of the other party and then creating a win-win around what they want and what you want. And in addition to being a great negotiation tactic and a great business strategy, it, it's also good karma, man. And people can feel you actually caring about them and what they want and what they feel. This is a life period, but especially negotiation, it can give you a head up on competing offers. So, Again, so whenever I do a deal and I make a proposition to somebody, I've always thought of the other party first. Um, I always thought about how can they benefit, how can they win first, second, and then I think about myself. Because even if I win third, I win in the long run. And I got good karma coming. So that's one thing I would say. If this doesn't make much sense, just hit me up and throw some deals at me and I can and tell me the particulars of the deal and I can give you my humble opinion on how you could propose and structure something that's a win-win 
in that scenario, give it a shot and see how it goes for you. And I, um, if you don't need my help, do it anyway. Let me know how it goes. Love to hear from would love to hear from people how to negotiate, but to me, that's the number one tactic, and I found it to work. Your boy's batting almost 100 with this, so hey, give it a shot.